Hello, I'm Carol Castiel, president of the Cape Verde Jewish Heritage Project. Who could imagine that predominantly Catholic Cape Verde, an archipelago of 10 small islands off the coast of West Africa, would at one time have a prominent community of Jews who came from largely Muslim Morocco. But that is indeed what happened in the 19th century when Cape Verde was a Portuguese colony. Cape Verde is a mixed race nation. From its history as a slave trading post in the mid 1400s, the country experienced centuries of intermingling between the Portuguese colonialists and Africans. The arrival of the North African Jews in the mid 19th century added to the rich cauldron of cultures. Sephardic Jews from Morocco and Gibraltar set sail for Cape Verde in the mid 1800s in search of economic opportunities and greater stability. Today, proud descendants of these immigrants bear unmistakable Jewish surnames such as Cohen, Levi, Benchimal, Benoliel, Pinto, or Wano. They also left several small Jewish burial grounds. That's right, at least four Jewish cemeteries are spread among the islands, a poignant and tangible reminder of the Jewish presence. The Hebrew and Portuguese etchings on the typical Sephardic tombstones indicate that the majority came from the Moroccan cities of Tangier, Tetuan, Rabat, and Mogador, now Essaouira. Because the original Jewish immigrants were few in number and mostly male, they often intermarried among the mostly Catholic population. Diluting affiliation over time with Jewish customs and traditions, this helps explain why Cape Verde has no active Jewish community today, although the descendants express great pride in their Jewish ancestry. So, lest they be forgotten, the Cape Verde Jewish Heritage Project was created to honor the memory of the Cape Verdean Jewish community by restoring and preserving their cemeteries, documenting their legacy through archival and oral research, and promoting heritage tourism. Tourism is now the number one economic development priority in Cape Verde. I urge you to visit the country, not only to see the remnants of the Jewish presence, but also to enjoy its many other historical and natural attractions, such as the beautiful, pristine beaches. At a fundraising dinner at the Portuguese Embassy in Washington, D.C., to benefit the project, Fatima Vega, Cape Verde's ambassador to the United States, underscored the government's strong support for the project. In Cape Verde, a country that is known for the great hospi hospitality or morabeza, tolerance and dialogue, the Sephardic Jews from Gibraltar and Morocco found a safe haven and indeed a new motherland. There, they were able to start a new life and prosper in liberty while contributing their skills, their efforts and resources to the development of our islands. This is the reason why the Cape Verdean Jewish Heritage Project is supported at the highest level by the Cape Verdean authorities. In that vein, the Cape Verde Jewish Heritage Project has signed several cooperative agreements with local authorities to repair the dilapidated cemeteries and to document the presence of the Sephardim through books, pamphlets, and videos. Democratic Congressman Barney Frank, whose Massachusetts district boasts a large Cape Verdean community, spoke in favor of the project at the fundraiser hosted by the Portuguese ambassador, João de Valera. We live in an era of great divisiveness. I am delighted to be here celebrating four different ethnicities, including the Moroccans. Three of the world's great religions are represented here today. And the example, not just of uh, tolerance, which is a fairly minimal way to deal with people, but of enthusiastic embrace of each other, of an interaction that celebrates each other's cultures and the extent to which these cultures have been mutually enriching, that's a great lesson. And I am very pleased to be a part of this and very grateful to be included in it. The Cape Verde Jewish Heritage Project is a nonprofit tax-exempt organization which works in conjunction with the descendants of the Cape Verdean Jews in Cape Verde and abroad. The project aims to not only preserve the Jewish cemeteries 
one of the few tangible vestiges of the community, but also to publish articles, books, and videos that will document their contributions to Cape Verdean society and mark their rightful place among the global Jewish diaspora. The district I represent is the beneficiary of all three of these traditions, of these ethnic groups, of these national, national groups. And to see this example of mutual support and cooperation is really a very important one. So I hope this is a, a lesson that will go out to the world, that this will be well written about and well documented. And uh, let me say in particular for me, being Jewish, to see this uh, affirmation of the Jewish heritage in Cabo Verde, uh, uh, to go there and as uh, we said, to have people come up and say that they're Jews. It is a wonderful statement of human beings at their best. John Wano is a project board member and a descendant of the prominent Wanon family. Speaking at a reception offered by the Moroccan ambassador to Washington, Aziz Mekwar, John explains why the Cape Verde Jewish Heritage Project is vital to him and other Jewish descendants. Uh, why is it important to maintain or to recover the cemeteries or to uh, preserve the legacy of Jewish, the Jews in Cape Verde? Very simple. As I said, myself, I can remember. Because my aunts, my grandfather, my grandmother, they told me about it. I can tell my children about it. But when my generation passes, the ones that come after may not have any source to learn about their Jewish background, their Jewish legacy. And that's one of the primary reasons, I believe, why uh, this project should continue, to give the youngsters in Cape Verde a chance to learn about not only the Jewish legacy, but for those who are descendants to learn where they come from, where they originated. I know for myself that uh, it makes me stronger because um, if I am here and I do not know where I come from, where I originated, uh, I'm kind of lost. If I know where I come from, then I know why I am here now. And I also know uh, for sure, for certainty, where I can head in the future. At the same event, hosted by Ambassador Mekwar, Rabbi Joshua Maruf of the Magen David Sephardic Congregation in the Washington area explains the significance of burial grounds in the Jewish tradition. Why then is it such a significant undertaking? Why is it so important? Well, when we see a cemetery, what we see is the impact that individual human beings, in this case Jewish human beings, but human beings in general, have had on this world. And we know that even long after the memory of a particular person may have been forgotten, the influence of their presence, of their existence, is still going to be felt. Whether it be in the form of descendants or in the form of the impact that they had on the lives that they touched. So when we preserve burial grounds, we're not doing something that is morbid or negative. We're really affirming a positive. The fact of the matter is that each and every one of these graves represents a human being who lived, who loved, who worked, and who died and who is entitled to have their memory cherished for many generations to come. When we affirm that about the, those who are interred in Cape Verde, we affirm the same about every single one of us. We have only a short time on this earth, and I know that we all hope that we'll leave a legacy behind that will be honored and venerated by those who come after us. But it's only if we take the initiative to respect our predecessors, our ancestors, those who've already passed on. It's only if we do that, that we can be sure that the same respect and honor and appreciation will be accorded to us. And so the Cape Verde Jewish Heritage Project seeks your financial support in preserving this important chapter in Jewish history. Daniel Mary Ashen, the Executive Vice President of B'nai B'rith International and Project Board Member, says it is precisely because Cape Verde 
is off the Jewish radar screen and lacks the natural constituencies of Jewish restoration efforts, so common in Eastern and Central Europe, that it merits our attention and support. It's a wonderful idea, I said to myself, because we know so much about the Jews of Eastern Europe, Central and Eastern Europe. Many of us in this room are descended from those communities. Um, we know a lot about the Jews of Morocco and North Africa. Uh, some of us in this room are descended uh, from that community. Uh, but we know very little about the history of this, this remarkable community um, sitting uh, as it was uh, right there in the ocean off the coast of Africa, and yet, which was the home to a, a thriving uh, and, um, and quite interesting, a uh, Jewish community. Preservation of memory is a critical part of the Jewish psyche. And in a world where anti-Semitism is ever present, it is inspiring to work on such a positive chapter in Jewish history, one which exemplifies tolerance and respect among Catholics, Muslims, and Jews. Now, for Carol, um, what sounded in the beginning like a labor of love has turned into a real important historical odyssey. With all of the important components, the restoration of cemeteries, the marking of places where people lived and worked, uh, archival information, interviews with descendants, there's going to be, when this is done at the end, is going to be a magnificent history here in all of its parts, in all of its components. It's not just going to be, let's go restore a cemetery. There will be that, and there will be much more, and Carol will tell you more about it, and you can read about it in the brochure. The passage of time, weather, neglect, and urbanization have all taken a toll on the small cemeteries, which are in varying degrees of dilapidation. We need your financial support to underwrite all phases of the project. There are three major uh, components to the project. Yes, to restore and preserve and maintain these beautiful bur burial grounds, which are dilapidated through time, weather, uh, benign neglect. There is interest, but hopefully this will be a great catalyst and we can get the job done through raising funds and raising awareness. And of course, the documentation phase, which we've been involved in, but we need to really uh, step it up, interviews, archival, and oral. And again, on my trip in Cape Verde, I was in touch with the university there. There's a great interest on the part of the university with researchers, all levels of government, from the prime minister, who has written us a letter of strong support and whom I met on the trip, uh, to minister of culture and minister of education, who, by the way, is of, of Jewish descent and is related to Jacinto Ben Ross, uh, and to the mayors. And they are the ones who are, in a, in a way, responsible for the cemeteries, the municipalities. So we're working with them. Uh, we have a, a good infrastructure in place, but this is why we need your help now. Anything you can do, small contributions, it's a small project, but a little bit can go a long way. The Cape Verde Jewish Heritage Project is a nonprofit, tax exempt, or 501c3 organization. We have very little overhead. Most of us who work on the project are volunteers. But we need your urgent help to defray the most basic operational and program costs associated with the project. We estimate needing about 250,000 US dollars to cover the project components from cemetery restoration to the documentation of Jewish families. Time is of the essence. Descendants with memories to impart are aging or dying. The cemeteries, the most concrete and poignant remnant of the Jewish presence, require immediate attention lest they deteriorate further. Please help us preserve this lost chapter in Jewish history before it's too late.
se divorció. 